We certainly appreciate everyone attending the third meeting of tourism and outdoor recreation this morning. We have one bill and one presentation, and it could be our final meeting of the regular session. We will see, but it, it, it very well could be. Would the secretary please call the roll? Representative All? Here. Representative Baker? Here. Representative Dotson? Representative Fister? Here. Representative Fraser Gordon? Yes. Representative Fugit? Here. Representative Grossberg? Present. Representative Lawrence? Representative Massaroni? Here. Representative Pollock? Here. Representative Roberts? Here. Representative Tackett Lafferty? Present. Representative Timoney? Here. Representative Truitt? Representative Wesley? Yes. Representative White? Here. Representative Wilson? Vice Chair McPherson? Here. Chair King? Present. Do we have any committee members with special guests today? Representative Fugit. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to introduce my wife of almost 35 years. Angelina is here with us today, and she's going to kill me for doing this, but... Uh, I appreciate her being, just make her well. Bless her heart's right. Welcome. We certainly appreciate you uh, being here with us today. Any other guests? Richard White, did you have a guest? I didn't think Representative Fugit was going to introduce his wife, and I was going to. So. <laughs> Well, we appreciate having all of our bases covered. <laughs> Thank you very much. Any other special guest? Well, as is professional decorum, if you would please silence your fel uh, cell phones and sign up at the podium at the front door if you would like to speak for or against the bill or be recognized for a presentation. We will start today with House Bill 712 and we are joined today by representative kim fleming the floor is yours thank you uh, uh madam chair and good morning to the committee uh on i think uh, the great opportunity to pre uh, present some legislation that will think have a lot of promises and significantly impacting uh kentucky uh and in the commonwealth particularly along the ohio river um, i'd like to go ahead and ask my two guests introduce themselves and i'll go through a quick uh, opening statement and then i'll turn it over to them mayor Good morning, everyone. I'm Deborah Cotterell, Mayor of the City of Maysville. And good morning, everyone. My name is Mark Knoll. I am the Executive Director of the Ohio Riverway. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, members of the committee, this bill is not just about enhancing our economic, uh, our, uh, economic landscape, but is also a testament to our uh, commitment to nurturing the rich uh, outdoor recreation that Kentucky is uh, fain, uh, frame, famed for. This legislation is established, and this is a mouthful, so bear with me, Kentucky Ohio River Regional Recreational Authority, or CORA, which is modeled after the Mountain Recreational Authority, which is having very good success. Uh, with the MRA and CORA, we are pioneering an initiative designed to spearhead the development of an extensive recreational system stretching across our mag majestic Ohio River region. We have a motion and a second. Do any members have comments or questions? Representative Fugit. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Representative Fleming, for this uh, bill. And and one thing that I'm I'm glad to see on your on the heading on our on our paper here is an act relating to economic development because this is so much more than tourism. It is economic development. Uh, we saw in in the East Kentucky with the uh, with the uh, re recreational trail, and I'm not going to try to say all the the, the name of it. Kentucky R River Regional Recreation Trail <laughs> System. Let's go, Cora. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, what we've seen, you know, it, 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 and ours is patterned after Hatfield McCoy's uh, trail system in West Virginia. And last year, their economic impact was 38 million dollars to eight counties in West Virginia. We're patterned to do the same thing in Eastern Kentucky with ATV trails. And I'm excited to see what you all are doing 
on the riverways, and there'll be some different trails and in, in all and in all in, in your build. But it, it really is rather than just tourism; it's economic development because it allows the local people that live in the area to uh, Airbnbs, uh, bed and breakfast, and all those things that that local people can benefit from outside monies coming in. And somebody asked me, if, are you for this bill? Is it going to be competition for the mountains? I said, I'm absolutely for it. Because the more people that comes to Kentucky, the more people is going to come get on the river at your place and come ride the trails in the mountains of East Kentucky. So I think it's really good for all of Kentucky, and I hope Western Kentucky does the same thing too. Because, again, the more people come to Kentucky, the more people is going to spend their money in Kentucky, and it helps us all as a state, and it helps our local people to be able to benefit from outside dollars coming into our communities. Thank you, Madam Chair. You are very welcome, and yours is a point well taken. That's why we wanted to make sure that we got the representative before us, uh, before session, tick tocked away. Representative Tackett Lafferty. Just a quick question about funding. How are you going to fund it simultaneously? Just a question about funding. Are you going to fund this uh, project similar to how the mountain? Um, project is funded uh representative i believe the um the mountain river uh, mountain river sorry mountain Re uh, recreational authority had an initial uh, allocation of about a million dollars i believe uh, the representative fugate can validate that but i think that might be the case but all than that this st structure to be self-sufficient uh, I can't say that we will or will not do this down the road in terms of funding uh, from, the, from the general funds, uh, but the grants and donations from individuals or for corporations as well as fees generated from that will hopefully go into uh, self-supporting that. I'll ask um, Mark if he has any additional comments about that because he, he's, he's a little more in the operations of it. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Representative Fleming. Uh, yeah, the only thing I would add to that is that we would we would leverage any state allocation uh, with uh, grants, partnerships, um, and philanthropic uh, funding, as well as potentially funding from federal agencies as as well. Thank you. Best of luck. <laughs> thank you, Representative Fugit. And and thank you, Madam Chair. And just to speak on the funding for our the, for the trail system. The first couple of years we didn't have any funding. The first funding came was five hundred thousand per year. Uh, this year we've asked for a little more, but it, we are on pace to start selling permits in the summer. And and again, it, it's a good investment. It's not a good investment. It's a great investment for the state if they invest in both areas in both systems. Because if you look at West Virginia, who put about a million a year uh, in their trail system in West Virginia, but the, but the return on investment is $38 million economic impact. That's a pretty good investment. And so I would encourage us as legislators to, in the future, get on board with, with uh, funding as much as we can any trail system slash economic development in this area. I think it'll help us all in, as, as a whole. So thank you. And I just want to add, I just want to appreciate the, the uh, representative's comments and then let me know what I can do to help facilitate more funding for the mountain uh, uh, area as well because I know it's I know y'all are in a situation that we need to do as much as we can from economic development standpoint but so I'm there to uh, to help support that madam chair if you wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind having the mayor just make a brief statements on what her experience is and what she sees I think that's wonderful you all made the trip here please please give us your insight thank you uh, Maysville is a river town, but following the 37 flood, the uh, flood wall was built. And so the Ohio River is a major asset that we hadn't for years taken advantage of. And uh, Maysville is a center for the region, and we see the river as an economic driver. And we have uh, leveraged some of our programming, and we, as a city council, have supported and leverage some of our dollars to get federal dollars. And we have several projects going on in Maysville right now, all connected to the river, including riverfront development. And I think this authority would help not only Maysville, but all of the towns along the river, especially that maybe don't have uh, as many of the advantages that we've had to leverage their dollars and to get the most economic impact out of those. And you are so correct. We have seen we've got a restaurant now that's coming to uh, anchor at our town. And there's just so many different uh, economic impact that comes from that river. And so even fueling 
uh, we've never had a fueling station. So they go to Ohio to fuel, refill their boats. And so that's going to change with this riverfront development project. So I think the authority would be a tremendous help to all of the small towns on the river. Thank you. Quick question. Do we have an estimate of roughly how many small towns or riverfronts might be able to participate? Go ahead, Mark. I don't have the specific number uh, off the top of my head, um, but we uh, this, this would encompass 25 counties up and down the Ohio River. Um, so if you can imagine it, at least 25 communities. And that is part of what is there now. And then I think the long-term plans is to extend this all the way down to the westernmost points of Kentucky as well. So I think the potential for even more is there. Yeah, and I, and I, I do appreciate your consideration. I mean, I, I live probably no more than 600 yards from the river and used to spend many, many summers there water skiing and so forth from 18 down to six mile out and so forth. So, so obviously in Jefferson County is a very, uh, very viable area. But uh, what I really liked about this, this goes from green up all the way down to McCracklin uh, County and it covers a whole spectrum and having a trail that will go on the waterway as well as on the ground provides a really interesting dynamic uh, if, if somebody wants to go the whole the whole way because if you look at the Appalachian Trail I know people who walk and walk and walk well this is, could be the same thing you spend several days walking in order to see all the wonderful rich uh, heritage that the uh, that our river towns have uh, in the Commonwealth. And I'd like to kind of add to that uh, when we have industry come for site visits, as mayor, they don't ask me about the workforce, they ask the experts. But what they do ask me about is quality of life. And the outdoor uh, recreation, physical activity, and opportunities that come along with this would be a huge asset for those that are looking at the quality of life, whether you want to live there or bring a business there as well. Are there any other comments or questions from the membership? Vice Chair McPherson. So I heard on the national news this weekend that the uh, federal government was going to try to make a trail all the way from Washington State all the way to Washington, D.C. So we want them to come through Kentucky if we can. We've got so many things, the Mammoth Cave and, and all that. So, again, uh, to the comments that are made, if we get them in the state, I think they'll stay in the state. Appreciate yeah. what you're doing. Uh, between uh, between Mark and the uh, the uh, Mountain Recreational Authority, we'll make sure we're, we're on that little trail from from, point, from one point to the other point. Anyone else? Seeing none, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Representative All, I'm gonna briefly briefly explain my vote. Uh, I think this legislation is by definition a rising tide lift all boats. I mean that's what we're talking about here today. So I appreciate you bringing this bill. It's a great bill. I'm excited to vote yes. Representative Baker? Yes. Representative Dotson? Yes. Representative Fister? Yes. Representative Fraser Gordon? Yes. Representative Fugit? Yes. Representative Grossberg? Yes. Representative Lawrence? Representative Massaroni? Yes. Representative McPherson? Yes. Representative Pollock? Yes. Representative Roberts. Briefly explain my yes vote. Thank you so much for bringing this. As one of the counties that is listed in the 25 counties in there, I just want to say a huge thank you. This is um, both economic development, but really for where I am, this is a quality of life issue for us. We've seen a huge uptick in Campbell County of kayak sports and sculling and uh, crew. And there are certain cities right there across the river from Cincinnati that still don't have access to be able to get into the river from those cities. Bellevue comes to mind. So I know people in my community are really excited about this. I'm grateful for the bill. Representative Tackett Lafferty? Yes. Representative Timoney? Yes. Representative Truitt? Represent, oh, excuse me. Representative Truitt? Uh, Representative Wesley? Yes. Representative White? Yes. Representative Wilson? Chair King? Yes, sir. And would Representative Baker like to be recognized? Or did you just? Okay, very good. <laughs> I 
The bill passes overwhelmingly and is now eligible for consideration on the House floor. Congratulations, and thank you for bringing this good idea to us. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I thank you for the members. And I appreciate your kind comments about this, and I look forward to uh, working with you all down the road as we get this thing to a point uh, to fruition. So We look forward to an update. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Of course. Thank you. Thank you very much. Making the trip in. Next, if representative and committee member Daniel Grossberg will please come to the presentation table. He has guests today to give us a brief update on Kentucky's film industry. So we appreciate you bringing this idea and update to us. Just make sure your green light is illuminated. Your microphone is fairly close. And please introduce yourselves for the record, and please proceed. The table is yours. Representative Daniel Grossberg, 30th District, Louisville. Christy Kilday. And I'm Jeremy Winton. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Uh, this meeting has been a long time coming. Unfortunately, this committee hasn't met as much this session as I had expected. Uh, and I appreciate you accommodating us on what would have otherwise been an even shorter day. We're here today because quite frequently, many of my constituents ask me what exactly they're getting for their tax dollars, both in terms of the dollars that we raise and spend and the dollars that we allow to be forgiven through tax incentives. And one of those is in favor of the movie industry. Um, when we develop tax policy, there are are three primary reasons. The first is to raise revenue. The other is to discourage bad behavior socially, economically, and environmentally. And the other is to encourage good behavior socially, environmentally, and economically. And what we've done for the movie industry definitely has that kind of impact. Uh, Democrats are typically not keen to giving tax incentives, but my friends here are going to tell you what the benefits have been for them personally. What their case is, is not unique. The industry is and has the potential to touch every county in the Commonwealth. In Lexington, for example, they have formed an LAX to LEX group to utilize the collective expertise of film professionals who used to live in California and have now returned to Kentucky to continue their careers. So far, they have identified 32 individuals in just a few months, and the group is growing. These individuals have been able to come home to Kentucky or chosen Kentucky to be their new home thanks to this program. There are examples all over the state of the impact that the film industry is having and its growth will continue to be exponential. I would now hand it over to Christy and Jeremy. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm very excited to be here today. Can you hear me? Are we good? Okay. Um, so I moved from Los Angeles to Kentucky in April of last year for the tax incentive. My tagline is I came for the tax incentive, but I stayed for the people. I have had the best time here and I want to contribute to the economy of the state. Um, I have 25 years of experience in the motion picture and television industry and am wanting to create jobs create opportunities and bring my bring my contacts, sorry, bring my contacts from Los Angeles to come here to film. Currently, we're actually working on a film in Mercer and Boyle County. And we have 53 people employed and in are using hotel rooms, restaurants, uh, local uh, clothing shops, you name it, we've kind of taken over the, the county in regards to filming. So um, there's endless opportunity in the, in the film industry for bringing money. To give you a, a, a general statistic, about $250,000 per day is influx into the economy when a film comes to town. You add that up over time, that's a quite a large sum of money. People are going out to eat. They're staying in the hotels. They're renting cars. They're having... Uh, weekend adventures when they are not working. So Jeremy and I have taken on the initiative of doing some marketing around that for the state of Kentucky because when I moved here, I actually had just found out Kentucky had a tax incentive. No idea. We hadn't been marketed 
in LA to that. And I was like, you have a tax incentive and you have this tax incentive, which I will argue is one of the best in the country. Um, so we have got undertaken calling every major studio, streamer and major production company. So we've spoken to everyone from Netflix to Disney to Warner Brothers, HBO, you name it, we've spoken to them and they none of them knew about this incentive. And now they do and they want to come here. We had two strikes last year that devastated our industry, the actors and the writers. So from the smallest independent producer up to the biggest distributor, everybody is looking for this incentive and to come and be able to spend money wisely in an environment that supports them. So the items that I feel like are great opportunities, as I mentioned, are marketing. We've done our best as a two-man operation of going out and using and calling everybody. Um, but there's additional work to be done. Uh, additionally, there is infrastructure that would also help. Uh, we, unfortunately, with the production that we're doing in Mercer and Boyle, have had to go out of state to get some materials. These are businesses that can be formed here and pivoted. So I'll give you an example. When I'm in Los Angeles and I want to make a movie and I want to have a car in the movie, I have a place I go that's a picture car rental. All they do is rent cars for movies. That's it. What we're doing now is going to dealerships and saying, hey, this is a new revenue stream for you. This is going to bring you more money if you're able to rent cars for movies. And everybody is overly enthusiastic about it. Same thing with something like wardrobe. We can go to local boutiques and influx capital into there as well. So infrastructure is the other piece. The third piece is education and workforce training. Incredibly important. We have some of our contacts that are willing to come to the state and bring people in and train Kentucky residents on how to make bigger productions. So essentially, they would bring an entire crew in that has all the years of experience, and they would go one-to-one -one with Kentucky residents to train them. Those people would then be able to stay and continue on and continue to build. So I love movies and television, but I'm really here to build an economy. And uh, there's endless opportunity here. The response has been highly favorable. And what else would you like to add, Jeremy? The tourism after, could you touch on that? I'm sorry? The growth of tourism after movies are completed? Go Please ahead. activate your mic oh, and pull it very no, close, no, no. much ahead. closer. I was asking her to touch on the tourism part of the But movie. I'm letting him do it. <laughs> oh, obviously we, I know I've visited uh, famous spots. I guess the easiest example is the Friends coffee shop in New York drives a lot of tourism. That's something we'll also come to Kentucky. And the films being filmed here will highlight the beautiful landscape that we have here in Kentucky, such as the waterfalls that were shown on the screens earlier. Yeah, it's been interesting because we're making all these phone calls, right? And I came here and, as I said, I love it. I'm a fan. I rented out my house in Los Angeles. I'm out of there. I'm here. I'm full on. Like, I'm ready to do this. And it's surprising to me, but everybody thinks Kentucky is just horses and grass. I hear this all the time. So we actually created a reel of what's available here in Kentucky, and it blows everybody away. The amount of water, bodies of water that's here, the mountains. I live in downtown Louisville, full cityscape with a with a riverfront. So there's a lot of misinformation about what Kentucky is, and we've been trying to um, show the expansive nature of what actually is here. So I know there's a lot of people that talk about the movie industry, and I would love to open it up for questions. And I will tell you, I will be completely honest with you because that's how I work. If we don't all talk about facts and fears and anything that's of concern, we're never going to be able to move forward in a good, productive way. So ask me anything. I'm here to answer. Before she does that, Madam Chairman, I just want to point out that this was organic. They are not hired by the movie industry, they are here on behalf of themselves from their own lived experience and have taken it upon themselves to invest in Kentucky and invest themselves in bringing more colleagues to drive our economy and our culture. Yes. 
Well, we do have quite a bit of interest. We have several in the queue, and we'll start with Vice Chair McPherson. So uh, I know that the Glasgow area has seen quite a few movies, and right in front of my sister in her house, and my sister and brother-in-law have actually been extras in movies oh, good. because of that. So, uh, you know, it brings a lot of interest, like you say. It just brings a, a big stir to the neighborhood when that happens, and everybody wants to kind of see or be a part or, uh -huh. or see somebody in town that they thought they recognized. Yes. So anytime you can bring enthusiasm to a, to a town, and just make industry grow. We we think that's a great thing, and, and we appreciate. It. And we and we think we do have a, a hidden gem here of of a lot yes. of different diversity in the state, from the west to the east, to the north to the south. We just have a, a lot of diversity, and and we appreciate you all coming and, and being willing to transplant here. And, and we appreciate all that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair McPherson, Representative All. <clears throat> well, let me first say, welcome y'all to Kentucky. Thank you. Uh, he's he's actually I'm from a, here. Okay. I, I, I am a Western Kentucky boy. <laughs> well, me too. What, which county? Uh, Hopkins. Hopkins. Okay. That's all right. I roped him. <laughs> I roped him into this. So okay. yes. <laughs> good. Good. Um, I'm actually someone who's dabbled in this space a little bit. Been to LA several times with my daughter to do reads and and uh, try out for the shows. I the thing that has surprised me over time is the number of these items that are housed like in Atlanta or even like Canada. We get a lot of reads mm -hmm. and tryouts in Canada. And so if we have these better tax incentives, and I think to uh, Representative McPherson's point about the uh, diversity of our landscape here in Kentucky from the mountains to the flatlands to the caves to the rivers on top of the horses, what is the one singular thing we need to do to start to compete to be that next place that becomes the next Atlanta that can house a lot of these, uh, you know, opportunities. Becoming the next Atlanta is my goal, and it's possible. Uh, infrastructure is the one thing. Um, I feel like we've done enough marketing. There's always room for more. There's never-ending marketing infrastructure pieces is really what it is. And I'm going to cheat with your one thing and also say we have to have some more workforce training happening as well. Um, there's quite a bit, and that's why I came here, was because there was a great creative community here. There needs to be more. And Atlanta had an influx of people come in to support that, but I'm a big believer of keeping it internally. Let's develop here rather than bring all these people from the outside like yes absolutely outside but it's very important to have people employed here in the state as well that are already kentuckians so i'll cheat and give you two <laughs> workforce training is a common theme we hear in just about every committee meeting representative fraser gordon thank you for being here and it's exciting um, i've been a big supporter of this and um, was um, grateful to pass the tax credit that you're taking Thank advantage you. of. So, um, but I wanted to take the opportunity, if I may, to um, give you your next big movie. Um, I'm I don't ready. Know if, you, I don't know if you're <laughs> familiar with Cassius Clay um, in Madison County, but he was appointed by Abraham Lincoln as an ambassador to Russia, and he was quite a colorful character. And it's um, I was thinking of conversation that I'd have with my tourism director because we've got it cast and everything. George Clooney would make the most fabulous Cassius <laughs> Clay. So, um, so bring I him just, home, right? Yes. So I just wanted to um, uh, reiterate everything that everyone's saying and I think that you'll find a very favorable response and so um, we're ready to um, make this part of Kentucky's economy and we're here to help. Thank you so much. Thank you. Representative Roberts. Thank you. Um, this is basically going to be a shameless plug for Northern Kentucky. Okay. But Northern <laughs> Kentucky has uh, has a really rich film history. It's a big industry for us. We are um, a lot of films have come there recently because we have these time capsules of architecture in northern Kentucky. We have, you know, uh, neighborhoods that are 60s modernism, 20s, 30s Art Deco. We have the largest collection of Italian uh, infrastructure or architecture around the greater Cincinnati area there. But I've been able to see firsthand how much this does for our area. And full disclosure, for those of you that think that I tend to dress myself well, is because my sister-in-law is a wardrobe stylist for films and commercials. Oh, can you, so I she, please get her contact yes, information? Yes, she's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've seen through her, you know, the kinds of jobs that this brings. And, and when a movie comes to town, 
they rent out hotels for months. I mean, it's exactly what mm -hmm. our hoteliers would love to have, you know, a, a room rental that is there for months on end. They um, they hire the garages and the mechanics to store cars. In my own neighborhood last year, we had about 100 1950s and 60s automobiles in town for months on end for a film that was filming there. They fill up our restaurants. Um, we have a costume shop that they have almost singularly kept in business the last few years. We have Midwest Grip and Light. So talking about the talent, you also need the infrastructure, right? You need all the generators and all the wiring and everything that goes with that. And then talking about what this can do for tourism, Next time any of you are in Northern Kentucky, come to a little restaurant called Pompilio's, which is in my neighborhood. Pompilio's is an Italian restaurant that's been around forever, but it is famous from the 1988 movie Rain Man because that's where the toothpick scene was filmed. And people still to this day come there just for that. So, you know, decades later, it lives on. So thank you so much. And we're renting from Midwest, so okay. yay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Representative Dotson. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, I, too, am full support of this. But just for my own education, um, when you say tax credit, what does that exactly look like for me? You so, moved here for a tax credit. So. I, well, not me. For the whole incentive program, for clarification, okay. is why. Uh, as I said, I'll argue this is the best in the country right now because of the parameters of it. So uh, if you are in an enhanced county, any spend that you do, you get 35% credit back for those spends. So if you go and you rent locations, you rent equipment, there's a 35% tax credit that comes back to the production. Gotcha. When it comes to people, right now it's 30% for out-of-state crew members and 35% for Kentucky yes, residents. Okay. Um, obviously things like Jefferson County uh, is at 30% because it's not an enhanced county. So being able to be in many of the other enhanced counties is advantageous and also, I mean, we're in Mercer and Boyle right now. Um, and that's kind of bounced back and forth between enhanced and not enhanced over the past several years. Um, but, you know, it's a, it's, it's a great, great place to be in. Thanks for clearing that up. Thank you. No problem. Representative Pollock. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a comment or two. Obviously, I'm excited for the opportunity for you being here. I want to uh, brag on our state. Yes, you mentioned please. on it a little bit with the mountains, the flats down in Western Kentucky. I live in Central Kentucky with the lakes and uh, obviously the Ohio River. Um, but um, you know, the people here in the state of Kentucky, when I hear about you really promoting the people here to get involved in your different properties and Representative McPherson mentioned the hidden gem. I, I want to kind of share that hidden gem. If you need a leading actor, let me know. I'll be glad to give <laughs> you my uh, contact information. So thank you, Madam Chair. <laughs> Wouldn't it be fun if our two presentations from today could coordinate and collaborate and come up with something, mm -hmm. a, a cool movie along, you know, Kentucky's river system. So we might have Absolutely. to work on that. And the ATV trails. And the ATV trails. <laughs> Absolutely. 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 Any other comments or questions for our presenters? Looks like Representative Grossberg has something. Just wanted to thank you again, Madam Chair, for letting us speak here today. And thank you all for your enthusiasm. And as a freshman, I want to thank all of those who were here when this task structure was passed, because you really are investing in the future of Kentucky. Um, it's not frequent enough that we on a committee have someone come just to say thank you and not ask for anything. Uh, and I thought that this was one of those special occasions because the level of enthusiasm they have exuded to me, I was telling uh, the chair that you all needed to hear that as well. I mean, I'd expressed an email to her, but I want to thank them and thank you all for giving the time and attention and for your continued support for the movie industry and investing in Kentucky. Well, you are welcome. It worked out very well for today. Members, this could be our very last session meeting. So in case that is the case would you please help me thank staff for their stellar work during the interim and any and every session thank you all so much for being thank here today you. any closing comments if not